Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Unfiltered. Pastor David, uh, it's uh, welcome back. I know we had the Thanksgiving break. We had some replays, uh, and it was a nice time to spend time with family. I and... think all 12 people who watched this probably <laughs> watched the replays. <laughs> Today, Pastor, I wanted to uh, ask you regarding a character that we studied. We, You just got it, took us through the book of Esther on Wednesday nights, and now we're in Ecclesiastes. But in this book, we were introduced to a man named Haman. And when you look at his, char at his character, he was somebody that had massive ego. And, uh, and it was proud and ambitious man who demanded that everyone would bow down to him out of a sign of respect. He was hungry for that. Mm -hmm. And when Mordecai wouldn't kneel to him, he was extremely angered. Mm -hmm. Are there pastors that are like Haman? Oh my goodness, I'm sure there are. I've met a few. <laughs> um, uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, it, it is something the church has had to deal with for a long time and continues to this day to deal with, and that is pastors who have a uh, uh, exaggerated consideration of their own importance. I would say, yeah, that is something that pastors uh, have to deal with you know that's one of the reasons i would think that that paul told timothy that he was not to um, be ordaining uh, novices into pastoral ministry lest they should uh, fall into the same uh, trap same sin basically of pride that that the, the devil fell in because pride is uh it is one of those besetting sins. It's one of those sins that can take you down if you don't um, exercise your freedom in Christ and become aware of, of your, your own sense of importance and how needed you are, etc., and all of that. So, yeah, I think that that kind of um, sin is, is, is uh, especially present uh, in the lives of novices and even sometimes can be present in the lives of those who have become well-known in ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing how many men went out to start a work humbly seeking God and asking the Lord, Father, I, I'm putting together the best message I can in my own, you know, limited abilities develop. So I'm asking for your help. I'm asking for you to to give me deeper insight and wisdom and help me to speak in such a way that it doesn't take away from your word and and it doesn't take away from, from the glory that goes to you. Help me, Lord. Uh, I, I don't want to touch your glory. And then God seems to answer those prayers and that humble pastor who at one time um, people in the church could feel comfortable speaking to or approaching becomes the unapproachable one, mm -hmm. the one who is regarded as so very important that he himself believes his own press releases. And before you know it, you can't really speak to him. He, he doesn't walk around amongst the people, you know, for whatever reason. Maybe he's just tired or maybe he's just not necessarily wanting to anymore. I don't know. But at one time, he wanted to be with the people. He loved the people. They knew he loved them, and, and they loved him because of his service. And but somehow he became more important than Jesus in the church, and he became the most important one. You know, Mordecai was somebody who would not bow before this man Haman. And as we went through uh, the Book of Esther, we saw how that, no matter how exalted or honored uh, Haman was he, it was not enough i mean he walked by and there's mordecai the jew as it says in scripture who would not show him the deference who would not give him that kind of um uh, regard and he, he was so upset by that that he 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 spoke to a Hoswaris and said well there are certain people that are are Ignoring your laws, and I think we need to wipe them out. Not just, not just the one Jew, Mordecai, but his entire people. And that's how far evil can go. That's mm -hmm. how far the, the need, at least in the life of uh, a Haman, that's how far that went to the point where he hated not only 
not only Mordecai, but anybody associated with him, right? And so is that something that leaders can fall prey to? Absolutely. Absolutely. The winsomeness, the kindness, the charm, the, the warmth that at one time made people love that pastor, um, that diminishes. I've seen it. I've seen it a lot of times, John. I, I, I hate to say it. I hate to admit it. But I have seen it. And I, I, I fear uh, for myself. I, I fear, I have had a fear of the Lord in that for a long time. God help me to never exude this sense of self-importance or judge, really judgmentalism. Because people hearing this may think, oh, you're just a jealous pastor, you know. And, and um, you know, they're, they're wrong about that. There are other sins I'm dealing with. That's not one in particular uh, that I would find myself constantly dealing with. That's it's, I don't think I'm jealous. I think that if there's a jealousy in my heart, it's for the things of the Lord and, and for the pastor to properly represent the kingdom of God and, and a God who is approachable and a God who loves and cares and, and, and a God who, who saves, not, not some pastor who became famous because he plastered his face all over <laughs> town or somehow got himself uh, known by, by many and the church begins to elevate. And that's a very dangerous place for him. It's especially dangerous for the church because of the influence that your pastor can have on so many. So yeah, John, we need to guard ourselves against that. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor, for that. And uh, I want to invite you guys to come join us on Wednesday evening. Pastor, you're taking us through Ecclesiastes. Yeah, we're in chapter two. Chapter two. And come on out and we look forward to having you join us. And remember that we have our Sunday morning services as well, 8.30 and 10.45. We look forward to coming out. Also, check our website for our Christmas information as we'll have services on Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve, regular service, and then we'll have a Christmas Eve evening service, and then our Christmas morning services. Uh, you can check out our website for that, for all of that information. We do look forward to having you. God bless you. Pastor David. Thank you. Thing, yeah, I'd like to say this. Listen, if you guys appreciate what we're doing, would you let people know? Mm. Because if it helps, please uh, continue watching and let people know. Yes. Appreciate that. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Pastor.